This is New Cap News with Kelsey Bloxham. Good evening. The man who sparked an eight hour standoff with Lloydminster RCMP still remains at large and there are new developments that he managed to evade police for a second time. 33 year old James Daniel Monroe is wanted after a confrontation with police at a home east of downtown Sunday. He managed to escape without incident. Monroe was last seen near Onion Lake. Police stopped the vehicle he was in, but he took off on foot. Monroe has made it very clear that uh, he will not be taken into custody without uh, a very high level of force being used. The members will not uh, be using tactics which would put them or the public at risk. So uh, we're taking uh, very prudent uh, precautions in how we deal with Mr. Monroe. James Monroe is 5 foot 10, 166 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes. He has a tattoo on each of his hands and he is considered to be dangerous. And another person has died from their injuries after a two vehicle crash near Rosetown on Sunday, bringing the death total to four. A westbound car had attempted to pass a transport truck when the vehicle collided head on with an oncoming SUV. 30 year old Ryan Bridger, the driver of the eastbound SUV, passed away yesterday afternoon. Three people from the collision still remain in hospital. There's no doubt there's no doubt fighter jets are a big attraction to the public when it comes to four wing operations and Maple Flag, but there's only one sector in the big picture when it comes to completing missions. Today, Clayton Brown takes a closer look at a Hercules crew and the role they perform. The lightning quick speeds and maneuvers of fighter jets are truly captivating and tend to make people forget about the support groups that help keep them in the air. That's where the Hercules crew comes in. We're uh, a uh, C-130 tanker. We operate domestically and internationally, uh, refueling uh, mainly uh, F-18s, our F-18s. Um, we've deployed uh, overseas to Italy. Uh, most of our, uh, our flying is done here uh, at home. Uh, or in the states. But the missions that we're doing here at Maple Flag are uh, a little bit longer. So to make that happen, we need to we need to be able to get our get our gas airborne. So uh, uh, they essentially uh, make that happen for us. And uh, without that, we certainly wouldn't be able to accomplish uh, the kinds of missions that uh, we do here at Maple Flag and uh, on other uh, NORAD exercises. The crew consists of two pilots, a navigator, a flight engineer, and two loadmasters, all with specific and crucially important jobs. As a tank commander, I'm coordinating with all the fighters to uh, coordinate airspace and deconflict all that sort of stuff. Uh, my first officer is uh, taking care of uh, paperwork and flight uh, performance uh, for the aircraft. The navigator is with me, uh, building the airspace for the operation. Uh, the flight engineer is constantly, uh, during the flight, uh, moving fuel around because it's, uh, we're burning it, they're burning it. And uh, the load masters are in the back acted as uh, observers uh, because we have no uh, eyes on the receiver aircraft when they're connected to us. To refuel jets in mid-air takes precise execution and intricate planning because one misstep and things can go horribly wrong. It is a very tight formation that we fly in and some, if something could go wrong, it could go very drastically wrong. So having everyone, having everyone on board at the same time, on the same page, knowing what's going on is very important. The closure rate is uh, many miles a minute. Uh, when, uh, when they're connecting, uh, it's a controlled mid-air collision and they're hitting the hoses pretty hard. But it's a job they love to do. It, it is a lot of fun. You get to see a lot of things, do a lot of things that normal people won't be able to do. At Four Wing Cold Lake, Clayton Brown, New Cap News. Back in May, myself and New Cap videographer Brittany Ring got the chance to go to CFB Wainwright and we got to take part in one of their training exercises. It was called Warrior Ram and it was an amazing, amazing experience. And uh, when we came back, we got the chance to create a documentary. It's called Warrior Ram Preparing for the Unknown. Tomorrow night, our documentary will be airing on CITL. You can catch it starting at 7.30 p.m. You'll get to go along with the troops during their training and get an inside look at the base, including a really, really cool scenario done by the Medical Brigade. So definitely tune in tomorrow night. And again, that will air at 7.30 p.m. 
Gerard joins us now with a quick look at weather, and it wasn't a bad day out there. It's like rain at yeah. various points, but for the most part, right now it's, it's a peach. Yeah, it's exactly. Gorgeous. It's you warm, kind of. Yeah, you would not believe what's coming down the pipe. No, I don't want to know. <laughs> if you look I'll outside. plug my ears. <laughs> Let's have a look here. <laughs> 19, um, yep, one or two clouds hanging around. Those clouds will build up as the evening goes along. But for the time being, if you want to get your afternoon stroll, jog, walk, run, now is a good time to certainly get on to doing it because anywhere from 10 to 15 millimeters of rain, some of it could be thundery, is in the pike going down to tomorrow. So we're going to share that with you a little later in the cast. Coming up, the SPCA is desperate for space. That story after the break. The Lindminster SPCA is over capacity and they are preparing or rather asking residents to open their homes to some good animals. The current shelter has more animals than they can currently support and they keep getting more. Lloydminster is growing as a community and unfortunately our shelter is just not growing with it. We just can't keep up, keep up to the demand and we fear that we are running out of good homes. Um, but we know that there are homes out there and there are people looking for dogs. The SBCA desperately needs more adoptions right now. It's an amazing thing. You can help an animal that's in need. Um, and then you also know that you're getting your animal um, from somewhere that's going to support you. We're going to support people through their adoption. Uh, if there's any issues that do arise, we're always here for them. A new shelter for Lloydminster is being planned, but that process will take some time. To adopt the shelter asks families to come check out what is right for them. Meantime, St. Joseph's Elementary held their annual barbecue this afternoon. The rain held off just long enough for families to enjoy their lunch outside. The event is usually a wrap up to the school year, but this year's was also in support of one of their own. One of our students uh, has Angelman's uh, disorder and uh, we're very, very proud uh, to be able to sponsor an event that's, uh, that's coming up involving his parents. Uh, and between this and a talent show that we hosted a couple of weeks ago, we, we should be able to raise a significant amount of money for Ty. Many wore white in support of the six-year-old whose family was right on board with the added support. It's a little bit overwhelming actually, like it, it just started out as us just doing a little thing and, and it's just ballooning to the point where we can hardly keep up. 
And that little thing is a 650 kilometer ride organized by Ty's dad from Lloydminster down to Wainwright, up through Cold Lake and back down to the border city. The Arts Without Borders week-long festival hit another high note last night. The Vic Juba Community Theatre played host to the Mayor's Awards in the celebration of the arts. Gerard Lampau reports. From dance to painting to prose and corporate support, Lloydminster took the opportunity to salute the artistic talent in the Midwest with a gala evening hosted by the Mayor. We have as much innovation and as much professionalism and world-class talent right here in Lloydminster on a per capita basis as anywhere in the world. The evening started with a reception which saw a number of artists rendering quick draw art, the proceeds from which would go towards a bursary. Dawn Lawrence Flowen, who won the Arts Without Borders bursary to pursue professional training, spoke of the importance of supporting local artists. Local art is handmade and you're just not going to find that quality in things that you buy, you know, in the big box stores and that sort of thing. And, it, and also when you purchase from an artist, you're, all the money is going back to the community. Uh, you know, artists tend to give back to the community. In Winners Row, Joan McLaughlin collected the Anne Townsend Award for Promotion of the Arts. For sustained support of the arts, Gail McDonald. Winning the Gwen Motram Arts Volunteer Award was Anne Hastings. And the Mayor's Award for Corporate Support went to Leckie and Associates. Believe me, we are very proud to be corporate citizens of this community. It's a great place to live, a great place to make a living. The arts celebrate our diverse community. It's increasingly more important as we try to grow a more diverse society that's inclusive, that uh, encourages investment and, and people to move here from all over. Uh, we don't want to be one or two dimensional, we want to be multifaceted. The face of Lloyd Minster is continually changing with people of all different cultures now calling the border city home. In this week's Beyond the Classroom, Lauren Poland tells us how the Lloyd Minster Public School Division is adapting to those changes to ensure every student feels welcome. It's tough enough going to a new school. Imagine adding on a new language and adapting to a new culture on top of that. Cultural diversity has continued to climb in the border city. The makeup of the classroom today is much different than a decade ago. I think those differences really enrich our discussions. They enrich our school system. And discussion is exactly what the school division is after as it seeks to include every student in the system. We talked about how, how accepting they are and how we need to be very explicit in terms of um, what that looks like and what we say. Hamey was born in Korea and moved to the border city at just two years old. But for her and her family, keeping close ties with culture is vital. They think it's important that we grow up as how Koreans would grow up as well. Parents like John moved to Lloydminster for opportunity. Originally from Manila, John is eagerly waiting for his family to make the trek to Canada, but in the meantime, he wants to ensure his kids feel welcome when they do arrive. I think that it is important for, for us also to not only to engage our similarities, but to work with our differences. And though the native community has been a part of the region since its existence, embracing Aboriginal culture is still a hurdle. And with Aboriginal grad rates still much lower than the rest of the class, community members say inclusion is part of the solution. Having the students feel that they are part of the community and that what they contribute is important is uh, very important in helping them to achieve their goals. And though the goal of graduation is what every student and school division aims for, making the experience of getting there a great one is what everyone's after. Acceptance Hamey feels is happening here in the LPSD. Everyone can like come out as who they are and be diverse. Lauren Pullen, New Cap News.